Coming up next, Book and It begins their miniseries on the Wingfeather Saga, beginning with On the Edge of the Dark Sea of Darkness. Hey everyone, and welcome back. I'm your humble and eloquent host, Cooper Cobbs. Joining me today are our three panelists, Isaiah Red. Actually, sorry. I was reading off a script. We only have two panelists today, Isaiah Resky and Matthew Killingsworth. How you doing, guys? Good. How about Howdy. you? I'm doing pretty good. I'm kind of sad that Tanner's not here, though. Yeah. Yeah, I know. This is like his favorite book. I know. Hey, he'll be on here next week. Yep. I cannot Hopefully. believe that it's fall break. And we were like, we got wide open weeks, and somehow we waited till the end of the week to record this, and only three of us are here. That's well, ridiculous. Because it was fall but... break, so then we all had stuff planned. Nah, true, true. We probably could have done this on time. Hey, earlier today, guys, we recorded another episode called The Giver Part 2. Oh, which yeah. Which oh, yeah. followed The Giver Part 1. And if you want to see those episodes or listen to those episodes, make sure to go to patreon.com forward slash book in it and donate to one of our 10 plus uh, tiers. So that's how you oh, get yeah. those episodes. Definitely. You know, guys, I think we've got a lot to get through today, so let me go ahead and cut this short, and we can get started on some baggage. You mean history books? <clears throat> Let's get started on some history books. Matthew, what's your history with On the Edge of the Dark Sea of Darkness, or just the Wingfeather Saga? Well, okay, so about three years ago, I heard about this book from Cooper, and he told me it was really good, and I have to read it, because we both used to uh, give each other book suggestions a lot, and Definitely. so he suggested this, so I started reading it. And I was really disappointed, especially after a lot of the other suggestions he gave me, that I really did not like this book. I was not into it, and so I couldn't get past the second chapter. So, um, and since then, I just, I, I actually never knew it was part of the Wingfeather saga until like a year later when I heard some other guys talking about it. And then, so I told myself I was never going to read this because it just wasn't worth it. And I've always been a big hater of it, even though I never really read it. Cannot believe it. And uh, until, like, uh, about a month ago when Tanner and uh, Tanner gave me the book and all the other guys were like, you have to read it. <laughs> I was like, okay. So I started reading it, and I still haven't finished the whole thing, but I'm getting there. I'm over halfway, so. All right, Isaiah, what about you? So I had never actually heard of this book. Well, okay. So my friends were talking about it, and I didn't know like, what the book was, or that it was a wing feather saga, or called that, or anything like that, they were just talking about a good book, like, three or four years ago, and I never, I just decided not to read the books they were talking about, and then, I think, like, the beginning of this summer, uh, Andrew Peterson, who wrote the books, uh, read them out loud, like, on YouTube and Facebook, um, so that's when I listened to him, but before that, I didn't, I'd heard of them, but I didn't know that I'd heard of them. Yeah. Why don't you go ahead and tell us about your baggage, Cooper? You mean history books? Yes. Uh, yeah, Why so do we call it that? Baggage is way better. Yeah. Baggage is Well, back to better. baggage. All right. Well, it's baggage again. <laughs> it's baggage. So, yeah. I, um, I, uh, so my family, the first time I ever read these books, I was, they were read aloud to me. I have some very good friends, the Amersons. Shout out if you're listening to this. They really liked his music. And before this, I had listened to do a little, I guess it was kind of an animated story book that had like a CD with it, you can turn pages, anyway, it's called The Ballad of Matthew's Bagats, and it was just a fun little uh, song of the genealogy of Jesus, but I hadn't really heard of his music or anything else, and the Amersons recommended the, this book series to us to read aloud, and so we decided to read it aloud, and Dad, we didn't read the first one out loud, it was just Mom reading it to us, um, because <laughs> the first one... He didn't, it didn't sound very interesting to him, but he started reading the second one, and the second one was really great, the third one was great, and the fourth one, we all were crying at the end, <laughs> and so it was just a really fun read aloud. We actually just finished reading it aloud again as a family a few days ago, so we just really love these read aloud, and I've read them a few times uh, to myself just for fun, because they're really great books, and I uh, recommended them to Matthew, and recommended them to another friend. The other friend actually liked it, but uh, Matthew, he did not like it, and I'm very glad that <laughs> hey, I... Uh, I like it now. We finally, like it now. Hey, we finally got him to read it, and he likes it now, so I'm very <laughs> excited to be talking, doing a podcast about it, yeah. But, um, 
Cooper, why don't you tell us more about Andrew Peterson while we're at it? Yeah, uh, Matthew normally does the bio, but I was like, you know what, why don't I do the bio today? So, I'm doing the bio. So he was born in like 1974 in Illinois, but he was uh, relocated soon to Florida, and he spent most of his life there. Uh, he was born to a pastor. Um, his dad um, was a pastor there. And as a kid, he loved to read just fantasy. Actually, we are talking about kind of the different genres on The Giver. So fantasy, more like Lord of the Rings type of fantasy, and like high fantasy. Something mm-hmm. like the Dragonlance Chronicles, the Belgariad, and the War Against the Chator. I haven't really ever heard of those until I uh, was reading up about them. Um, so he kind of, here, I'm going to read a paragraph from uh, his book called Adorning the Dark. The book st- lifted me straight out of the mossy pines in North Florida and plopped me down in a magical world, just as surely as Lucy stepped through the wardrobe and found herself in Narnia. My young mind crackled with longing, though I wouldn't have known to call it that. I merely said to myself, man, that's so cool, in an awestruck whisper. So he really, was. he considered himself kind of like an outcast, or and he really just loved reading fantasy, and it just kind of transported him to another world, you know. Uh-huh. And he just loved to read um, here I'll read another paragraph from Adorning the Dark here. So in those days I was restless without a book in my hands, without the hope of some new story around every turn to, to enliven my deadening senses. Unlike most of my friends, I didn't want a truck or a job or a scholarship. I wanted a horse and a quest and buried treasure. But there were no real quests anymore, not in my town, so I had to make them up. And that led to a series of hijinks that I'll write about when I'm old, and most of the witnesses are dead, and the statute of limitations has run out. So basically, he just loved reading these, and he loved actually kind of writing, writing these, and maybe even like doodling and notebooks about them. And it really kind of motivated him to help write the Wingfeather Saga later in life. Yeah, he, he, I was listening to a podcast about him, and he was like, you know, whenever I got to a part where I didn't know what was going to happen next, he was like, what would Kid Andrew do? What would he want to happen next? And he really just wrote off that. So really? after he... Uh, graduated high school he went to bible college and he um kind of met the lord there he was he was a christian before but well maybe he wasn't but he was one of those guys who knew like jesus was real and knew who he was but in college he really just had a full-on encounter with the with christ and so after that he dedicated his life to uh being a worship singer for him and just kind of using his gifts for the lord and especially singing so after um College, he married his, well, actually, during college, he married his current wife, Jamie. No, sorry. He's married to his wife, Jamie. <laughs> he still, <laughs> soon after that, he recorded his uh, demo, Walk, after bor- borrowing a couple thousand dollars from his grandma, and he said it was more or less awful. He moved to Nashville and just kind of tried to make it work. They really couldn't find any gigs or anything. But then, a uh, really old band, well, not really old, but they're called Caden's Call. They really just kind of opened the door. They let him open for him, and ever since then, his music career just kind of took off. Um, right now, they have three kids. They have uh, Asher, Aiden, and Sky, and uh, he's written multiple albums, uh, and he has written also The Wingfeather Saga and a book about creativity, which I really love, called Adoring the Dark, and I highly recommend it. So that's just kind of some background on him. All that to say, he's basically Cooper's superhero. Yep. I don't know. I don't know. Not, maybe not a superhero, but I really like him. He's got a great story. Uh, I just really like Adorning the Dark, too. So I think he's just a great guy. Awesome. But now let's talk about his great book that he wrote. Let's do it. So, Matthew, so, you've never, you, you mentioned kind of it in your uh, baggage, but you've never finished the book. What did you think this time, though? Uh, I mean, I thought it was good enough to keep reading, even though you guys are making me read it. I, I think if I'd gotten to this point, I'd probably go ahead and finish it. Yeah. Just to know what happens. Trust me, the uh, s- the next one is a lot better. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I think it just gets better every book. Yeah. Really? I think that yeah. North of Beaton's better than uh, Monster in the Hollows, but that's just my opinion. Mm. Anyway. So in the beginning, you know, it's like really funny or kind of comedic and kind of juvenile. Does it really feel like a uh-huh. comedy story in the beginning? It kind of does, yeah. That's what I thought it was when I was listening to it. Yeah. Yeah. What yeah. about you? Especially, I wanted to bring this up, because usually you ask for opening thoughts, but you didn't this time. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Up. I should ask uh, that, yeah. I want to talk about footnotes at first. Uh, yeah, so we'll definitely get to this. I'm, okay, I'm a little confused. Are those 
like, are they just, like, everything in those footnotes just to be goofy because he just makes it all up? Or, is like, how does that work? So, in the first book, most of them are funny, yes. The second, third, and fourth books, they're a little less uh, common, and they div- they give more of history and background instead of just okay. being funny. Like, my favorite footnote that he did, so he's talking about the thags, which is their schoolwork, you know. And yeah. it's called Three Honored and Great Subjects, and it's basically writing... Uh, drawing and song, and he was like, some people think that there's a fourth honored and great subject, but those mathematicians are woefully mistaken. Yes, and yes, that like, one was good. Was amazing. But that was funny. But my f- personal favorite was when uh, it they were all listening to the dragons, and it was like. The mayor promised to never oh, pick yes, his nose one. again. Yes. And then the footnote goes, he broke his promise on the way home. <laughs> yes, that was hilarious. Uh, I, okay, I that was, was so funny. Yeah, I was watching him read this aloud too, and he laughed at, at one. I remember it was about this guy who wrote the the uh, Age of the Kindly Flabbits or something like that. And he was mm-hmm. like, he disappeared, but people still enjoy seeing his middle name. And it was like Chooch or something like that. Yes, was, yeah, I, I remember that one. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Isaiah, what do you think okay. about these footnotes? They are pretty funny, at least in the first book. <sighs> I remember, actually, I think it's in the second book, like near the beginning. It was like this name of an animal, and then it did a footnote to describe it, and all it said was, Ugh! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was like that exact sound effect right there. I'm gonna, Every time yeah. I read that, I'm just going to keep that sound effect in mind that Isaiah <laughs> just did. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> So the intros, which besides it being funny, do they set up the world well, or do you think they're just really being funny? Um, I guess it kind of does both at the same time. Yeah, I guess, yeah. I mean, it's pretty. It's it's pretty similar to Earth. Um, uh, they don't. I mean, it's obviously not modern technology and stuff. Right. But they just have like it's it's interesting how some things have the same names and some don't. Mm-hmm. You know. I, I like tried to think about it. Are those like tomatoes, basically? Yeah, I know. I, I don't know what they are. They're, it's a potato-tomato mix. I don't know. Like, there's almost... But then they have, they have some funny stuff that's like butter bread is just like the normal thing. Right. <laughs> and, it's, you know, there's they really... just like mix words and it's like a normal thing in their world. The, the animals, there's not a lot of similar animals. Like, they have like a horse and a dog, mm-hmm. and that's about all the same animals that they have. Mm-hmm. They're all made up. Yeah, and then there's a tooth yep. cow. Or toothy cow. Toothy cow. Yeah, toothy cow. Toothy so cow, you think right. if that Andrew Peterson wrote this first as like a comedy kids book for younger kids, but then made the next books less so? I say this question is mainly for you since you've read the other ones. Uh, I think so, yeah. I mean, I think all of them still have comedy in them, but not as much as the first. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Matthew, like... Do you think this is, like, really juvenile right now? Or how juvenile do you think it is? I mean, I... Yeah, maybe not really, but... I think it's... It's what? I don't know. I think it's, uh... A little bit more that way. Yeah. Than, yeah. Than most books I read right now, I guess. Mm -hmm. Especially, like, the books we've been reading for school. I think this is a little more juvenile than that. Yeah. So as uh, some people have compared this book, it's the most common comparison. They compare it to like the Green Ember. Do you think that the Wingfeather Saga is better? The book better? about rabbits that Tanner's obsessed with. Yes. Yeah. That, yeah. That series. <laughs> Do you think that the Wingfeather Saga is better? Um. Oh, it just depends on what you like. It's just how it yeah. is. They're both, they are similar in ways, a little bit. Except one's about rabbits. Yes. Yes, but they are still kind of similar. But, I don't know, I like the Wing Feather Saga better. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Do you think the dialogue's better here? Do you think the bet writing's better here? Or is it? Ooh. Uh, I can't really answer that. I haven't read The Green Ember in like a year and a half. Yeah. So... I don't know for sure. Yeah, you just like the yeah. Um, I think that the Wing Father Saga is better. I've read the Green Number; they're fine. I just think that the Wing Father Saga is just better. It is better writing, but that's just my opinion. So, we're all older siblings here, right? Mm-hmm. Right. We're all the oldest. Yeah. 
Have you guys ever felt the frustration of having to look yes. out for your younger kids? Cause, yeah, definitely. Yep. It didn't matter what you were going to say. Yes, I felt <laughs> <laughs> You ever feel, like, restricted looking out for your younger siblings? That yes, they, I've uh, felt that before. Mm-hmm. Can, can you give, like, a, a story or a circumstance? Oh, I mean, not super specifically, but, I mean, it's, it's happened several times where... Uh, oh, th- actually, I can think specifically, like, sometimes when... Like, maybe after a football game, my whole team is going out somewhere to eat and hang out afterwards, and I don't get to go because my youngest siblings have to get home to go to bed, and so I get to go home, too, because I can't drive yet, so. You have your permit, though. Yeah, but they only brought one car, so. Oh, that's true. Okay. Isaiah, what about you? Um, I mean, mainly it's just, like, when my sister won't listen to me or anything like that. Oh, yeah? Really? Or when my mom and dad go out and I have to take care of her. Oh, yeah. That just oh, means yeah. I'm give sure her cupcakes. It's so hard and... taking care no, of one okay. sister who's 11 years old. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> so, Poto says that sometimes a man means putting others before yourselves. Do you think that's a good definition of being a man? <sighs> uh. I mean, or a good I quality? It's a, yeah, it's, it's a good quality. It's not the only quality. Or the only yeah, I kind of phrased that wrong. But yeah, what do you think about it, Isaiah? Um, I think, like Matthew said, it's definitely not the only quality. It is a great man. I'm trying to say this where it's not the same thing Matthew just said. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm just gonna say what Matthew said. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Gosh. Yeah, I mean. Sometimes being a man doesn't mean just to do everything yourself. It means letting others and more capable people sometimes do it or just, you know, being willing to humble yourself or sacrifice yourself. I think to an extent it can also mean the opposite. Like being a man can also be doing stuff for other people. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. I guess I guess that's it can be the same thing. It can be the same thing. Put them first as in right. do the work exactly. so they don't have to or Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I think Poto's pretty character. funny. He's a pretty funny character. Oh, I yeah. feel like he gets Especially more piratey action. as the book goes on too. Oh, really? definitely. You know what I mean? Cuz like I'm like I'm a little after halfway now and now I feel like now, now I picture him as that pirate guy from the Lego movie. Seriously? You know? Wait, he's just Yes, seriously. He's literally just like all pirate. Yes. Okay. You don't. What do you picture him as? Um, he's literally. He has a peg leg. He's like just big. I don't picture him as some, it's some bodiless robot pirate leg guy. <laughs> okay, good come on. That. Bodiless, <laughs> organless. I, I thought he had a shark for an arm. <laughs> oh come on. You know what I mean? Just not not like that. Just like a big pirate guy with a peg leg. Yeah. Never mind. But yeah, he also started talking more like a pirate as the book goes on. That's oh, true. really? Yeah. More than you did at first, yeah. I didn't know oh, that. definitely. Yeah. So what do you think about Nia, who's the mom, and Poto, who's the grandfather's this decision to hide the truth about where they came from and who their father is? Just to kind of protect them. Yeah. I, that is, I know, Matthew, you don't one exactly thing. know who it is I don't is know who yet. the dad is yet. Okay, I have a guess, though. Is it that singer okay. guy? Oh, actually, don't tell me. That's my Arnland guess, Arnland the Bard? No. No, it's not. It's not? No. Is it the guy that threw the rocks? Dude, just stop guessing. Yes! You didn't say no. It's, no. I knew it was one of those two. It's not, but... Cool. It's not. I also thought it might have been Armaland, whatever you say, I just said the Bard, no to that. who threw the rock. No, I thought it might have been him who threw the rocks. Bro. Actually, I had the same exact thoughts when I was listening to it that Matthew's having. Okay, right now. so now all my so things are wrong. Just to know. What? I never said they were wrong. I said I thought the okay. same thing. Okay, Isaiah, Isaiah, no, spoiler free, answer the question. Wait, what what do you think about me and Poto's decision to hide the truth about where they came from and who their oh. father is? Uh, I mean, what do you mean where they came after from? After reading special. the whole series, is their father the dragon? Oh my gosh! <laughs> I got it. No, <laughs> what the heck? Okay, Isaiah, oh. answer the question. <laughs> so, um. I mean, whenever I was first reading it, and I didn't know anything, basically, like Matthew, uh, 
I didn't think it was right. But, I mean, now, after I read the whole series, I agree with it. They definitely, I think they should have. Could you maybe get some more depth on why without spoiling? Well, you know? um, I mean, if they knew, they could have accidentally uh, said it to the kids yeah. and then got in trouble. and Yeah. Yeah. Hey Matthew, why couldn't you? It's Nag the, the Nameless. Why couldn't you have finished the books? So is it Nag like the Nameless? Is no, the Matthew, dad Nag the Nameless? I guarantee you, you're not gonna guess it. So stop. Oh. Yeah. I was well, I'm thinking of all the characters. You know, you know who were like his father's name is Esben. Remember? Do you not oh. remember? Oh, yeah, they yeah, said the name know. of the father. <laughs> yeah, his name's Esben. You still know okay, when, okay. right? I wear. I mean. Yeah, I was just naming. All the characters I knew that could possibly be the dad. Okay. Anyways, what was your question? Uh, you can answer it. <laughs> so, <laughs> do you have paranoia when it's just you looking out for your siblings? Or do you not really have paranoia? Oh, do I have paranoia? Um, not really. It just yeah, depends on where I am. Sometimes yeah. I have paranoia when my whole family's in a place that I think is kind of sketchy. Yeah. But it just depends on where. It's not really with, about who I'm with. It's just where I am. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm pretty comfortable. Mm. With, like, it's not it's not caused just from yeah, I don't think, watching I don't all five really of them. It's not either. a problem for me. So you don't like feel the burden of your responsibility, the responsibility of watching. I mean, I feel responsibility, but it's not like I'm not I'm like used what you're saying. Guess. Yeah, mm, not paranoia. Yeah, not paranoia. So you couldn't really identify with Janner. Uh, no, I cannot identify with a guy like in who this, in this lives case? with a pirate and lives in a village overtaken by walking talking snakes yeah i can't identify with that no i definitely no, can't no. not that just, no like the part where they're walking into the glipwood fe- the the dragon day festival and he's getting scared that lily disappeared and getting scared you know stuff like that i've never oh had well if all, if all that stuff had happened if one of the kids i was supposed to be watching disappeared and almost got eaten by a snake man and I got in trouble with the police and stuff, then I'd probably have paranoia. <laughs> but Okay. Yeah. Yes, if okay. it happened, but I've never actually... No, I've never been in that position, so... Yeah, no. Yeah. Okay. So, Glipwood. What did you guys think about Glipwood as a whole? Do you like the town? Was it a good description? Could you imagine it? Yeah, yeah I could I picture could imagine it. it. I never actually, like... Got, I ha- or at least not yet. I haven't gotten the map down in my head, you know, of just, like, how I imagine everything. I d- mm-hmm. like uh where it is compared to everything else. I never really follow the maps and books when I read stuff. I always just kind of make it up in my own head. But I haven't really gotten that down yet. But I can picture all the places and what they look like in my head. Mhm. It's weird cuz whenever whenever I'm reading books, whenever I'm reading books, all the different places like different houses and you know, different scenes, I guess, I always picture as some place I've been to pretty frequently in my yes, own life. Yes, definitely. So something kind of interesting is the uh the um what do you call them? The Igabee's house is mm-hmm. uh Tanner's house. It's, it's not really his whole house. It's just his living room. It's Rough. Tanner's living room, <laughs> and, and there's like hammocks in it. It's so weird. But yeah, and then like other houses, like. In different books, I always pick some house that I actually know. I don't know why, but it always happens. Isaiah, <laughs> could you picture, like, the uh, peaceful life that they lived? Uh, Yeah, I could. I could picture it. Wait, what like, do you mean me? peaceful? Just, like, the kind of quiet, just, like, on the cottage, the quiet life they lived. Oh, like farming? Mm-hmm. Just sticking to themselves 364 days a year? Yeah. Yep. So he feels restless in Glipwood, but he and he longs for adventure. You know, I can kind of see some parallel there, with like Andrew Peterson almost. Yeah. It was kind of the bio, like, the like bio he, thing yeah. you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Where he uh he 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 wanted to go and find treasure, go on a quest, right? And the the fantasy novels helped him kind of go to yeah, that. He really world. wanted to go to Anaria. How do you pronounce that? Anaria. Uh, yeah. Well, I think he called Andrew Peterson says Anira, but I say yeah, Anira, 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 so I don't. Anira. Anira, okay. Yeah, so uh, Mr. Ratip says you can't find peace in Glipwood, you can't find it anywhere. Can you identify with Jenner, or what do you think about what Mr. Ratip said? 
Um, I don't know. I haven't read. I haven't read about anywhere except for Glipwood. That's true. So far. But basically, Mr. Atip is just saying that Glipwood is one of the most peaceful places. Yeah. They really don't have as oh, much really? restrictions as other places that you'll find out about later. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. But they have Slarb. Yeah, well, other Slarb's places have worse. Right yeah. As we'll talk about with the Dreaded Fork Factory next, well, two weeks from now. Yeah. So, do you think that Peterson, or Andy Peterson, describes the hopelessness of the people under oppression will? They kind of, you know, they don't really seem like that, but they really are? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, what do you think about it? I mean, he definitely describes it, and he describes it like, basically, where you can picture, like, on the outside, they don't look hopeless, but you can tell that they are, or that mm-hmm. you just know they are. They're chilling themselves, but they're not. Yeah. They're not depressed, or, I mean, the hope, and hopeless. Do you think that you can never tell that somebody's depressed or hopeless until it's pointed out to you? Um. I don't know. I guess it just depends. No, I think you can tell. I mean, you can tell. It just depends if but how the person is, like, if they're hiding think, it or not. I think humans can tell, uh, to a certain extent, other humans, you know, you can read feelings yeah. some. And I think you can read depression most of the time, unless they're just really good at hiding it. Um, but I think, like, all the people of Glipwood, they kind of put on a fake face whenever they went out anywhere. Like, on mm-hmm. the festival day, like, in front of the fangs, they just acted like everything was normal. But then when you go in the, like, the one scene in the library, like, everybody just hates the fangs. Like, Oscar and especially oh, yeah. Poto, like, at home, they're always, you know, trash talking. Yeah. Which I kind of thought, you know, Poto would want to be, like, really, to, like, make sure his family is safe. So if he's trash talking nah, all the time, home, I feel like they're no. going to accidentally say something. Well, Poto can take care of himself. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> anyway... I think that's a good spot to stop now, and uh, we'll come back next week and finish the book with Matthew having a lot of things revealed that he doesn't know yet, so (laughs) we'll get a lot more spoilers next episode. And this one's almost like a spoiler-free episode. We can probably just say it right now. Yeah. Anyway, let's do some donor shout-outs. How do you guys want to do this? Yeah, I was trying to think of a way the other day. It didn't work. Yeah, Uh, I think we should just have one person just read them out every week, just go assign, it, assign it to a no. person. Yeah, Zach, go ahead, do it. I did it last week, sort of. Uh, Matthew, you oh go Oh, my gosh. All right, so we've got Van Pappy. Love you. Love you. Uh, wait, do you call her, wait, is it Nana? Nana. Yeah. Nana. And, Love you. Uh, Isaiah's grandparents, Isaiah's uncle, Sebi. Woohoo. Is there anyone else? Oh, and uh, don't forget Isaiah's sister. Becky's donating now. So thanks, Love everybody. Ya. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Yeah. That's it. Love you, patrons. And if you want to support us, make yes. sure you go to patreon.com forward slash book. And the link is included in the description below or in the show notes below. Please, please oh, rate yeah. and review us in your favorite podcasting app. Please support us. Just sacrifice maybe one Starbucks coffee a month and support us for as little as $5 a month. We'd really appreciate it. Signing off for now. Until next time. Keep on booking it.